Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is another Tuesday and it's time for T3, which is another T. It's actually three T's. We're going to come to you today live from the FSJ studio. I'm Kim Kesty, creative director here at Fun Stampers Journey, and we are featuring today tools, tips, and techniques. And I am mostly going to focus on the techniques today, so I'm going to bring you a fun project using a kind of an unusual color combination for fall and share a little project with you. And of course, share my tips along the way. So again, welcome to T3. I am so happy you're here with us today. We're gonna get started with a couple stamp sets today. Now this is all about getting more mileage out of your stamp set. So let me show you the two that I'm gonna be working with today. I've got my Happy Harvest stamp set. These are both from our holiday mini catalog. So I've got my Happy Harvest and my Turkey Party. Now instead of focusing on the main images, which are, you know, the big guys on here, I decided to do a fun little background with all the fun little accents that sometimes get overlooked in these stamp sets. So I have things like this little pumpkin pulled out and then this tiny pumpkin over here pulled out of a stamp set. I've got the sunflower from the Happy Harvest. So I'm gonna be sharing a lot of those really small stamps and show you how to create the first part of a background and then we'll get to the colorful part. So let's get stamping. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Plus I've got this little tiny guy. I'm gonna save him for last because when I do create a background, I wanna start with my largest images first and then I start stamping away and then fill in with all the small little guys. So let me go ahead and start with my biggest one, which is my sunflower. Make sure that's loaded up with ink. And I'm going to start in the very center of my center of my card panel. So this is going to be the panel that's going to eventually become the background of my card. So I just want to come in and again, starting with your next biggest stamps, which would be the two pumpkins. You just want to come in and start filling away. Fill that space up. Get my little small pumpkin here. And then of course you're going to need to repeat and bring in other pumpkins. But don't forget to twist and turn your stamps as you work. I hope my head's not in there. <laughs> and again, bringing in your larger ones, filling in with some small guys. Bring this guy back in. I won't sit and do the entire background right now because I do have one by the magic of our video already done. But I think you guys are getting the idea. So see, I have a little gap right here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my little tiny stamp. It almost looks like a tiny little mushroom or something. Is that what it is, you guys? These stamp sets actually are both ones that our illustrator Kara did. And so I love to look at the fun little details. Like there's a lot of fun leaves. There's a bigger mushroom. But I'm thinking this one's more like a cone. Does that look like a mushroom to you? I'm not sure. So if you're watching live, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me what you think that is. Maybe it's just one of those fun little, you know, fall cone things that hangs around. So do you get the idea of how we're stamping away here? Let me go ahead and flip to the one I finished earlier. And you can see that as we go to town and just start filling in, all those little gaps, it becomes just a really fun pattern. Keep in mind when you go get to the edge of your paper, you want to stamp right off the edge. That continues the movement of this whole design right to the edges of your panel. So don't be shy about filling in every tiny little fun thing. Ooh, I can see some feedback. What, what did that say? A morel mushroom? Kind of hard to watch, this, watch the comments as they go, but yes, I think it might be. It might be a morel mushroom. Okay, so I'm going to move my stamps aside, and now I'm going to grab one of my Clearview sheets. This is actually the sheet that comes with your stamp set. It originally comes packaged with a sheet like this. So guys, don't throw these away. Keep them handy. I could also use my gel press for this technique, but since I'm only creating one card, I figured the Clearview sheet was good for us to work with today. If I was going to do multiples, I would go ahead and pull out my gel press and do that. Now, you want to see the colorful part I was talking about. Let's lay out some of these yummy colors. I haven't really demoed a lot yet with our splashes, so I thought, what, what fun would that be for today? I've got five different colors here. I've got Sour Lemon, so that's in our Be Amazing palette, Lemongrass, Outrageous Pink, which you're probably thinking, Kim, you're a little bit crazy right now, Citrus Cooler, and Pineapple Smoothie. So I basically got a lot of the yellows and reds and oranges, and then just I'm going to add a touch of green at the very end. So check out how I'm going to create with these splashes. 
The splashes are really fun and a lot of them have just a little bit of metallic in the bottom. So you do kind of want to gently shake them and get that metallic kind of swirled in there. Just a little bit of a shaky shake. And then instead of actually spritzing with this, which of course you can do and you can get some really fun effects with that, I'm just going to open the top of the bottle. Now be careful, you don't want to spill out your splash. And then I'm just going to put some droplets on my clear view sheet. So I'm going to be more or less random, but I can already tell that this is going to be a fun color to add to my, you know, sunflower effects. So that one is pineapple smoothie. Kind of show that real quick. And then I'll go to my next darker orange. This one is citrus cooler. And again, same idea, just putting some dabs. This one's a little darker, so I won't put quite as much. Just a few of the darker tabs. You guys see that? Fun. Now this is the kind of the surprise, the outrageous pink. Now that is a be amazing color, and it's pretty darn neon when you use it full strength. But I'm going to use it two different ways today in this Tuesday video. The first way is right here by dropping it onto my palette. When the outrageous pink gets watered down, it's really a pretty color. I think you guys are going to love it. Okay, so same with the sour lemon. Again, a really bright color. I hope this works out, you guys. <laughs> you know I already tried it at least once. See how the sour lemon has a kind of a green flare to it? So I love that when it's watered down. Is this looking crazy? This is looking crazy. Okay, so when I get to the lemongrass, again, I'm going to be really sparing because I don't want a whole ton of lemongrass, but it complements the sour lemon so well that I'm going to kind of put it in some little dabs next to that sour lemon. And it's going to just make that a lot richer and funner. But you don't want too much green because you don't want to make all these other colors muddy or anything. Okay, so now what I have now is uh, one of our media misters, and it's just filled with plain water. All of our color splashes are water-based splashes, so you can add water to them for any kind of effect. You could even put a little extra color splash right in one of the media misters and thin it out. Then that would completely change the color of what the original splash is. So the fact that they're water-based is pretty fun. It means you can do a lot of different fun techniques. So for this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up a little bit here and go ahead and spritz this. I'll move my stamped panel in case it goes crazy. Sometimes if you spray so hard, these kind of take on a life of their own. So I want enough liquid on there so it gets fun and splashy, but not too much that it goes, you know, crazy and muddy. So I'm just taking my stamped panel right here. I'm going to put it face down in my fun little color splash. This is kind of a smooshing technique. I don't know if that's an official term or not, but that's what we call it because basically you're just smooshing your cardstock right into the color. Oh, actually, it's very pretty. Now look how much of that color it soaked up, like that cardstock, and this is not even our splash sheet, but that cardstock just gobbled up all of that color. Now keep in mind, I, I think I'll add a little bit more here. Keep in mind that it will dry a little bit lighter than it looks right now. So if it looks darker than you think or darker than you were expecting, again, just keep in mind it will dry a little bit lighter. I'm going to put this splashy to side here. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's kind of fun. Do you see how the outrageous pink, you know, really just kind of softens into those lighter colors once it blends with the orange and whatnot? Now, as this dries, it might stay a little bit curled up. You could put like a flat, you know, heavier book or something on it. But what I like to do before I actually go to my card project, I wanted to give this as a little extra tip for you guys. I take my white liner and I take my bloom tool, which has the bent piercing tip on it, which is perfect for this white liner tape. By the way, those of you who are newer to Fun Stamper's Journey, might not realize what the tip of this bloom tool is for. But I go ahead and grab some of our white liner tape, and this just tears super easily. In fact, if that's a little too long, I can just tear it away. And I'll go ahead and put several long, sturdy strips on here. And what this is going to do is this plain panel is going to reinforce my what I call my watercolor panel. But the bent piercer is perfect. You can, number one, smooth your white liner tape down so it's really well adhered to your cardstock. And then, especially for those of you who are fingernail challenged like me, 
Instead of picking away at this, trying to get this tape off, the bent piercer is absolutely perfect. You just bring it in and look how slick. Just lifts that baby right off. Is that like the best thing ever? I love this tool. We call it the dental pick around here at the Journey Station, but it's actually officially called the bent piercer. So super easy, I would go ahead and add several more strips. And then once this is dry, I would adhere it to this panel. So that's just gonna give me a little extra sturdy card base. So that's just doubling it up. So let's take a look at the one that I did earlier and it is all dry right now. You can see the difference. So I can't guarantee this one's gonna dry quite as light as this one because it looks like I have a little bit more sour lemon probably in here. But isn't that fun? It is such a fun technique and so easy. It's not anything super technique-y that nobody can you know, understand. I don't understand how you did that, it's too complicated. Just put a few little dabs of color on that sheet and again, spritz with water and just smoosh that cardstock right in there. Super fun, super easy. So I don't know if you can notice the last step I did and I'm gonna add it to this one right here. I went ahead and took the outrageous pink because that's kind of what I wanna highlight in this piece right here. And I did it while it was wet. I just added some of our silk. So again, all the metallic yumminess at the bottom. Shake that up a little bit. I'll move this one aside. And then I just flicked some silk on this guy. That just brought out the, the pink factor in my card. So isn't that pretty? Just a few little extra flicks of the silk. See those now side by side. Love it. Okay, so I knew that wasn't gonna dry. I'm gonna let that dry over there while I use this to actually finish my card. So believe it or not, the card base I picked for this card is peaches and cream. I love the softness of this once it was dry. And when I was trying to pick out uh, you know, different colors for my card base, I thought, you know what? I really love the peaches and cream. I think it just gives that softness to that fall project that I absolutely love. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up with foam tape. And you can see here where I have my extra panel on the back. I already did that earlier. So we'll go ahead and pop this guy up to my card base. I'm gonna show you one more fun tip for a little DIY embellishment for the front of my card. I hope you will enjoy. So again, this is trimmed to four by five and a quarter, so it just gives me that nice little border on my card. So love that. And I did go ahead and take one of the sentiments from the Turkey Party set, this guy down here, thankful, grateful, and blessed. And I white embossed that on just our plain black cardstock. I thought that would be a fun little addition. It's kind of floating there, so I debated about putting a banner. What do you guys think? I kind of like the banner. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my shears and do the fun little notch technique for the banner. And you guys know this one, right? You come in the center of your cardstock. I want a little notched banner, but I want it to be super even. So I'm gonna come in and just snip it. I'm gonna snip both sides. Cause once I'm snipping, I want these to also be even. I can kind of get the groove of it. And then I just come in from the corner to that center line. And it comes out perfect every time. Super fun, super easy. I feel like I just yelled that every time. Yay. Okay, so no more uneven banners if you guys like doing these little notched banners. That's kind of fun. I like that. Where do I want it? Down here? Up here? Maybe up here. Get this guy on its side for sure. I go right in the middle. Yeah, I like it more toward the top. Decisions, decisions. Anytime I'm adhering paper to paper and I'm not worrying about it, you know, having huge coverage so it would warp, I use my craft glue. Okay, so we'll let that dry for a second and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna embellish, or actually DIY an embellishment for it. So I have my white string and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, the white is fine, it's pretty. But what I really want is this yummy peaky, pinky peachy color. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try something kind of fun. I'm gonna get a generous amount of twine because if I like it, I might want it for a couple projects. Just gonna kind of wind it up. And then I'm gonna bring in a little dish. You can use any kind of dish, plastic dish, whatever. 
I'm going to dump some water in here, and I'm going to try to dye this string. I thought of this yesterday when I was like, I really want the string a different color. And I had tried something like this a long time ago with a natural colored string. But I love the idea of the white because you can change it to any color. So then I go ahead and grab my same splash that I used earlier, Outrageous Pink, because I know it'll match, and add some of this to the water. Ooh, it's like brewing up a secret brew or something. <laughs> so funny. So go ahead and kind of swirl that around and you can obviously make it as dark or as light as you want. And kind of look at it and see if I like what color is coming. I think I love it. Look how pretty it's going to be with that card. And I know it's going to dry lighter so you can actually sit and let it soak for just a couple minutes. But I'll go ahead and pull it out now just so you guys can see. I don't make too much of a mess. So again, the white twine, you can change it to any color you want. This is how it looks like when it's all dyed up. Really pretty soft pinky color. So love that. I do have a strip over here that's already dry. So I can show you. It really didn't lighten up much when I did it. This is mine dry from earlier. Yeah, it lightened up just a smidge, not, not much at all. I'll put my wet stuff over here to dry. So now I have a fun little twine that I can use to accent my card, and it's just a fun new color. So I hope you guys love that idea. I would love to have you try it with some different colors and let me know how it turns out. I'm going to go ahead and do one of our little famous triple bows here. If you guys are on YouTube, you know that one of our most popular videos is Miss Lynn teaching how to do this fun triple bow. I'm sure I went kind of fast there, but you can always go check that out on our YouTube channel. Which, by the way, are you guys subscribed to our YouTube channel? Because it's a pretty cool channel. If you guys love techniques and you love learning new things, you might want to think about subscribing to our channel and checking us out over there on YouTube. Okay, so I have my fun little bow. I've got this clip, which is kind of fun. I think I have a little smaller clip here, too. Let me see. I wasn't quite sure once I got this far. Do I want it up here? This is kind of fun. Maybe I'll just use a smaller clip this time. This is a fun clip too. It's like one of our little planner clips. But I love the baby clothespins too. Look how tiny. They're so tiny. So I could either clip the bow on or I could just kind of fake it and have the clothespin there and put a little dab of glue. Clothespin, I mean paper clip. And then it sort of gives the idea that it's clipped on there. Well, no card is complete with a little, out a little sparkle, am I right? So this is one of my go-to embellishments, the Fashion Silver. I feel like once we have the little silver clip, we could add a couple little blingy things. Maybe we'll put one here, one up on the little white tab. I usually try to do them in threes. So that's kind of fun. A couple little extra sparkles to it. So, I'm happy with that card. I think it's fun. I hope you guys learned a few new fun techniques. I would love to have you try that background technique. Now, if you're not really into the idea of stamping your own background, we also have an amazing background stamp in that uh, Journey Holidays called Color Me Fall. So it's an already done background stamp full of all fun little leaves and little miniature pumpkins and whatnot. So you could use that same exact stamp just stamp your background one and done instead of creating your own and then use the same technique with that uh, fall background stamp. So that's another idea for you to you know, try something new. But I thought it would be fun to teach you this method just so you can think about getting a little bit more mileage out of those stamp sets. Especially when we have stamp sets that are seasonal, maybe we don't use them all year long. So this would be another idea to like, hey, grab that stamp set out, try something new. So let's take one more look at our card and I promise that I will get this photographed and get it up on the blog for you super fun if anyone wants to like capture that real quick in a screenshot if you're impatient um, but in the meantime again if you love this video go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel or give it a share share it with somebody who you think might enjoy learning some different tips and techniques I try to come to you every single week for T3 and it's always a pleasure to bring paper to life so have a great day